So a bit of context, I initially had a rough draft script complaining about the current state of AniTube, but I realized that stacking that on top of the anime analysis when I had so much more to say about both of those things means that either both of them would be diluted or I would have to push the date for the anime thing to past October, and it is a horror anime, so I really don't want to do that. Part of this is due to me being a lazy snob who gets distracted by everything, but I feel like if I want to make a semi-active channel, it's better if I spit out something while I'm working on big stuff in the background. Enjoy. So here we are in fall 2022, a season that many are hyping up to be one of the best in recent memory. I personally have had a falling out with anime, though I do watch the occasional show every other season or dust up on an old classic. I don't keep up with THE current thing, and I haven't had an interest in keeping up with the current thing since 3 or 4 years ago. Though I'm mainly interested in a lot of the sequel series, I am very interested in some of the stuff that is coming out as original or adaptations of works. Chainsaw Man in particular comes to mind because of the discussion around the anime and manga. Now a lot of it is definitely just personal experience of going to high school as a zoomer with everybody saying mid 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 based, but I look on Anytube and I go on discord servers and they're pretty much saying the exact same things. Now I'm not one to shy away from saying that the current thing is 100% overrated, but improper usage of words is really what grinds my cock into confetti. People tend to attribute this to anime becoming mainstream, and the usage of the word mid is also attributed to Marvel because people realize that Marvel just isn't getting any better after Endgame, and some people just realize that it wasn't very good to begin with, and there are only a handful of movies that deserve the praise that they did get. But that is a discussion for another day. The funniest thing about this conversation for most onlookers is that the people calling Chainsaw Man mid and overrated are people who think Demon Slayer is great. It's seen as a head-on collision of two hype trains with incessant fans who get their opinions from the screen. And both of those hype trains were filled to the brim with gasoline tanks, making it for a hell of a 4th of July. And that's where I want to highlight something important. Gen Z isn't making this up, they're not the originator of this. They're regurgitating what millennials shed out. I forget which AnyTuber said this, it's one of the big ones. I think it might have been Giguk, they're associated with the anime man to some degree. But it is something that has been a constant in the anime community since the 2010s. And it's the idea that something under the score of 6 or 7 is bad. The reason why this came about to be is because Mal and Mal scores being atrocious. For example, Akamega Kill is regarded as something not as good as the manga, and even the manga itself is seen as better but still schlocky. Yet it has a higher score than things held in high regard, such as the original Gundam movies except for Soldiers of Sorrow and Angel Cop. For reference, the score of it right now is a 7.4 and Angel Cop's score is a 5.9. Let's look at another series. SAO Season 1, which includes the Alfheim art, is rated at a 7.2. The trend of SAO being compared to every new fantasy nowadays by anti-tubers may lead you to believe that it's considered average since it's compared to everything, therefore it must be some sort of bar. But if you look at a lot of the channels that compare everything to SAO, they state that the series is bad and awful garbage, like Jeff and Digidoo. Or they say Eincrad is decent or Elfheim is garbage, sort of like Demo and Nux do. So how do you get a 7.2 out of something that is more than halfway bad and less than halfway decent? Funnily enough, to answer that question, all you have to do is look back only a couple years, not even back to when SAO was considered a good series. My Hero Academia Season 2 and 3 were both in the top 50 anime of all time at one point or another. And gradually, they fell down, along with their subsequent seasons. Season 5, for example, has only a 7.4. In comparison, Hero Aka Season 2 had an 8.6. And these scores also fell dramatically. Hero Aka Season 2, as I said, was an 8.6. Now, it's at an 8.1. It's pretty much just become hype train cannibalism at this point. Whatever the next hype thing is, will have an 8.6 until it's their time in the hot seat, in which case they'll be demoted to a 7.9. 
The only reason why it hasn't dropped to a 5, or at least closer to a 5 than it reasonably should be, is because the fanbase for it hasn't grown all that much, though it is a significant amount to impact it and lower its score noticeably. This, from what I can see, is the exact same thing that happened to SAO. Looking at the Wayback Machine, the earliest date that happens to be after the final episode of SAO aired, it shows that the score is an 8.4. Then after that, a lot of hype for the series died down, and a lot of people started talking about it negatively. Digi, Jeff, and Demo D all had very negative impressions of it, and they were very big in the anime community at the time. However, since, according to my anime list, SAO is one of the biggest anime of all time, second to only Death Note, there were only so many people who were still interested in anime at the time who were willing to have reviews on the series that were negative. On top of that, may I ask you, when was the last time you changed a review for a series on a website? Since I know half of my audience personally, I know that very few of you use review sites in general in terms of posting your scores and writing reviews for them, but my point is, you're not very likely to change a review for a series you already reviewed. Granted, there are a few people who are very self-conscious and want to change their score to something lower after the hype train had died down because they want to dissociate from the fanbase. Similar to how some people say they don't like Undertale, even though they were a huge fan who posted a lot of stuff on DeviantArt and they played a bunch of Scratch games for the Bullet Hells. Fuck you. So this explains why a lot of anime that people often hate on don't have very low scores. But what about the other way around? Why is it that a lot of anime that people praise to the high heavens have low scores for what people say they are? For example, I brought up that the first two Gundam movies are rated lower than Akame Ga Kill, and Angel Cop being a 5.9. So I've come up with a list of four perspectives I can see this from. Number one, I've never experienced anime before, so everything isn't bad. Number two, I don't want to look like an asshole by saying something that is popular is bad, because by virtue of it being popular, there must be some sort of immutable good quality about it that draws people in and I'm not seeing. Number three, if it was below a 5 out of 10, then the show should at least be egregious and be so bad that it's good and entertaining, instead of me not being able to say anything about it, good or bad. Four, I don't want to admit that I wasted my time, so I'll say it's worthwhile, but distinguish it as worse from those other things that I think are worthwhile, even if those things are stuff I won't be revisiting anytime soon. The first one explains a bit, since you don't want to be seen as a noob in a community and not be made fun of. But seeing as how disconnected new anime fans are from the old ones, they can likely just find a group of other new people who have the exact same library and opinions as they do. Also, I don't really like the explanation of words being too offensive being applied to a media opinion. I pray that there are a billion times more real people in the world than pussies who are afraid of saying a movie is good or shit, unless that person is in a country where it's legal to lynch people for having that opinion. Daily reminder that Hotline Miami 2 is a bad game. The second one, not wanting to look like an asshole, fits in with the being new to the community. Even though this is a viable explanation for the thought process, I believe that this type of thinking is toxic. Someone being more passive-aggressive about their opinion, even though they strongly believe it in one way, means that they're able to avoid having to engage with the conversation. If you ask them why they don't like the show, then they can say, I don't hate it. If you could ask them why they don't hate the show, then they can say, I don't love it. And in neither of those situations will they try and elaborate on it. And because of that, you can't really challenge their opinions in any way, because they're just being extremely wishy-washy. I'm not advocating that all conversations about anime have to be specifically about how we view media and very introspective like that. For example, even though I don't personally like Demon Slayer, I can see people having value in theorizing what's going to happen in the next chapter or episode, at least at the time it was publishing. Back in the day, I used to find a bunch of power scaling conversations very interesting as well. But whenever somebody makes a claim about a series' quality and doesn't have much to back it up, I can't see that conversation giving value to anyone since it's only really them saying that they've seen the show and they know it exists. They could be thinking that the framework for the story is good, but the writing for the dialogue is horrible, or they think that the framework for the story is horrible, but the dialogue is really good. However, since you don't know how they value these specific things, 
You don't really get a greater understanding of the person, and you don't even get your own beliefs challenged that much, so chances are you're not changing or gaining anything internally either. The third explanation is one I think to be a lot more likely than the others. When you think of a 1 out of 10 show, you're thinking of something that is directed like visual aids, the music sucks ass, and the characters do things that you don't want them to do or you wouldn't do yourself. All that is to say, you haven't seen a 1 out of 10 show. A 1 out of 10 show is one with no direction, flat dialogue, from characters whose range of emotion are less than the animation range of motion. People not taking the time to think about what constitutes bad and differing that from what constitutes mediocre is the root of the problem. But since we can't necessarily force people to care, we're just going to have to kind of deal with it. The fourth one is a more extreme example of this where it's just, I don't care about media in general, and fair enough, we should just leave you to your own devices. But at the same time, I highly recommend you don't review something if you don't want to put in the effort of thinking about why it's good and why it's bad. It comes off as extremely snobbish to say that the root of the problem is that a lot of people just don't care and are extremely lethargic about how they review things. There's no real solution to this on Mal since aggregate sites will tend to bend to popularity and reviewers will be paid off. There's one problem with the former though, and Nuxtaku highlighted this out in his best internet thing, where he rated Mal so that interspecies reviewers would be rated as the best anime of all time, which Mal responded kindly with lowering the rating under the guise of getting rid of trolls. My brother in Christ, you made it publicly accessible and you made it an aggregate site, with nothing distinguishing professional reviewers, animators, writers, and directors. And you get mad when people use it for its intended purpose. Because nothing says professional more than being a fucking rat. Considering non-anime has their own ratings instead of entirely relying on Mal's database, I'd be laughing the day Mal's servers get burned down, especially if it happens right before they pay insurance. But all asides aside, just make a new site. The aforementioned specialty groups, writers, directors, animators, and whatnot, if they want, should be allowed to confirm their credentials for the score to be seen as separate from the aggregate score. And people who are casual but want to put their two cents into things will be forced to write a review, which is a better way of parsing out trolls than the shitty way my anime list does. The site will not be that big, but it will have people who genuinely care. The problem will then be moderation. The fact that the site has to be overrun with ads, subscriptions, and just begging for donations, like Wikipedia is doing nowadays. The site will transparently not be a voice of the people, seeing as those same people would rather bite their tongue off than say their actual opinions. 